Students, in this video, I will go through exercise Euphoria 3B, where I will be applying concepts related to rectangles. So let's take a look. Question number one reads, justify if the quadrilaterals are parallelograms, rectangles, or is inconclusive. So uh, for, the first prob for the first set of questions here, I've um, written out the solutions already. I'm just going to give you my thoughts on it. Uh, if I were to write this live, then this video would be way longer than it really has to, and I don't want to torture you on that. So let's just get through it. Uh, question 1A, since I'm given this diagram with where the diagonals are marked up, um, it can be shown that the diagonals are then congruent to one another, and not only that, they are bisecting one another. So therefore, question uh, quadrilateral A is indeed a rectangle, because diagonals bisect each other and are congruent. Next, Question letter uh, diagram B. This is straight up a property of rectangles uh, because opposite sides are parallel, therefore making it a parallelogram. And in a parallelogram, if I have at least one right angle, then therefore it must be a rectangle. So B is a rectangle. C is also a rectangle because all four sides, I mean, all opposite angles are congruent. And in a parallelogram, opposite angles are congruent. And if we have at least one right angle, then therefore this is a rectangle. So this is indeed a rectangle because opposite, side, opposite angles are congruent and we have right angles. Letter D, again, straight up right out of the properties of rectangles. Opposite sides are congruent, so therefore this is a parallelogram. And we have at least one right angle here, so therefore this is indeed a rectangle. Letter E, things get a little more interesting. So I have four congruent angles. Since the sum of interior angles in a quadrilateral has to be 360, no matter what kind of quadrilateral we're dealing with, uh, each of these angles, therefore, must equal to 90 degrees apiece. And because all opposite angles are congruent, this is, in fact, a parallelogram with 90 degree angle, thereby making it a rectangle. Letter F. Diagonals are bisecting one another, but it does not suggest that the diagonals are congruent, so therefore this is only a parallelogram. Letter G. This is a parallelogram only, because we only know about the opposite sides being congruent. We don't know anything about the diagonals, and we don't know anything about the angles. Letter H. This is only a parallelogram, because opposite sides are congruent. We do not know anything about the diagonals or the angle measures. Letter I. This is the probably the most challenging um, question of this type. And the best way to explain this, I mean, let's read my explanation here because it's a little cryptic. It says, rectangle because it can be shown that the sides that are congruent are also parallel. Now, how can you show that? How... <laughs> Uh, my apologies on not being um, as thorough in, my, thorough in my explanation. So I want you to think about the following, right? If you have a pair of parallel lines right now, and I don't know how long they are, okay, let's say I'm going to purposefully draw this one a little shorter. The distance between these two lines, okay, can be shown by drawing which line? Is it a line at its endpoint, or is it a line that's going to be perpendicular to the um, opposite parallel line? Well, it has to be a line that's drawn perpendicularly, which we do. So I have a uh, so I have a line that's drawn perpendicularly between these two parallel lines. These two lines are parallel, by the way, because these two angles are together are supplementary, right? And consecutive angles uh, cut by a transversal uh, interior consecutive angles must be supplementary. So therefore, these two lines are indeed parallel. So wait a minute. This line here, therefore, is rather important. This is actually the shortest distance between the two parallel lines. And if that's the case, that line there is also congruent to this line. Therefore, the line on the right must also be the shortest distance between the two lines. And if that is indeed the shortest distance between the two lines, then just by just by logical reasoning by deduction right these two angles must also be right angles because that is in fact the shortest distance between the two parallel lines those angles must be 90 as well so therefore this must be a rectangle 
Letter J here is not any particular kind of um, quadrilateral because I can very well draw this quadrilateral to look like this. So now I have those two segments there are congruent, right? I can draw the, seg the, the quadrilateral looking like this. And based on that, you can clearly see that this is not much of anything. It looks like a trapezoid, actually, but it doesn't have to be a trapezoid either. Okay. All right, this is the part where I will actually do the questions live in front of you guys. So quadrilateral ABD have coordinates of 1, 3, 3, 4, M, N, and 3, negative 1. I'm going to plot these things first. The question is to find out what coordinate, where coordinate C is, and if there are multiple answers, to identify multiple answers for coordinate for point C. So I have A, which is 1, 3, which is this guy right here. B is 3, 4, which is this guy right here. So this is A, this is B. C is nowhere to be found, but D is 3, negative 1. 3, negative 1 is right here. So if you notice, the slope between AB is 1 half. So therefore, the slope between AC, I mean AD, must be negative 2, which indeed it is. So if D is over here, right, and the and in order for this to be a right angle, in order for opposite sides to be parallel, the other coordinate for C must therefore be located over here. It must be at 5, 0. So C must be located at 5, 0. And to answer the question of whether or not there are multiple uh, answers to this, I don't believe so. But if you find other solutions, um, please do let me know, okay? So C here is 5, 0. Okay, so the next one, uh, graph each quadrilateral with the given vertices, then determine whether the figure is a rectangle. Justify your answer uh, using the indicated formula. So we need to use the slope formula. All right, I'm going to try to find the most effective way to, to figure this out. So I want to first plot this as the instruction uh, is directing me to do so. So negative 4, 3 is right here and then followed by so this is w followed by 1 comma 5 which is this guy right here that's x 3 comma 1 that's y and z is negative 2 comma negative 2 which is this guy right here so and it says to use a slope formula so uh, to find out what is the slope of wz uh, I can just count. This goes from 2, 1, so this is five, negative 5 halves. So the slope of WZ is negative 5 halves. The slope of WX, whoops, Again, I can just count, and this looks like it's going to be 2 up and over 5, so it's going to be positive 2 halves, I mean 2 fifths. And the slope of xy, I can just count, so I'm going down 5 and over 2, so it's negative 5 halves. And the slope of zy. I am going up 3 and over 5. So it does not look good for uh, for ZY. Let me just double check that. Negative 4, 3, 1, 5. 3, 1. C is negative 2, negative 2. Yeah. So it does not look... Let's see, 2, 4, 5. 2, 4. Oh, I made a mistake, which is why it looked funny. So XY is actually not negative 5 halves. XY is actually negative 2. Okay, so this is not anything. WXYZ is not 
uh, is only a par is only a quadrilateral. It's not a rectangle. So the instructions here says determine whether the figure is a rectangle. Justify your answer. So I don't need to do any more justifications here because opposite sides do not have the same slope, right? So opposite sides do not have the same slope. Okay, and that right there by itself justifies that it's not a rectangle. Uh, a is four comma three, four comma uh, B is four comma two. So uh, the graph is on the other page. Four comma three, four comma three, and what was the other point? Four comma negative two, and the other point. Negative four, negative two, and negative four three. Negative four, negative two, and negative four, three. So this is in fact a rectangle. So this is a rectangle, and what is the method in which they want us to justify this? Because I do want to follow the instructions here. It says using the distance formula. Okay, so we don't have to use the distance formula verbatim. The Pythagorean theorem is a workaround that, okay? Or in this case here, you can just count. This is 5, 5, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8. So that's 8 uh, and 8. However, that by itself is not enough because using only the distance formula, so now what we have is this is a parallelogram, but we got to, whoops, we got to find whether or not the diagonals are indeed congruent because we got to use the distance formula here, right? So because of this, uh, the quadrilateral, what was it named again? It was A, B, C, D. So A, B, C, D. So A, C will have a distance of 5 squared plus 8 squared, which is 64 plus 25, so that's uh, 89, square root of 89. So AC is equal to square root of 89, and so will BD. So ABCD is a rectangle because... Diagonals are congruent and opposite sides are congruent. Okay, next. So uh, W is negative 2, 4, which is right here. 5, comma 5 is right here. Y is 6, comma 2, negative 2, 6, comma negative 2. And Z is negative 1, negative 3. And we need to use a slope formula. So we can actually just count again. So WX is 1 over 2, 4, 6, 7, 1 seventh. XY xy is we're going to go down 2, 4, 6, 7 and over 1 and then zy we're going to go up 1 that's a negative 7 and we're going to go up 1 and 2, 4, 6, 7 and over 7 and the slope of wz is we're going to go down 7 and over 1. Right, so let me double check. 2, 4, 6, yep. So it's going to be negative 7. So WXYZ 
is a rectangle because adjacent sides have negative reciprocal slopes. So adjacent sides are 90 degrees, so adjacent sides are perpendicular. Okay, moving on, 3 comma 3 is J. 3 comma 3 is J. Then negative 5 comma 2 is K. Negative 5 comma 2 is K. And... Negative 4 comma negative 4 is L. Negative 4 comma negative 4 is L. And lastly, M is 4 comma negative 3. 4 comma negative 3. And we need to use a distance formula. So to use a distance formula again, we are going to find out what these lengths are. And we don't need to use the distance for formula verbatim, okay? Uh, so kj, I know that we are going to go up 1, so that's 1 squared, plus we're going to go 2, 4, 6, 8, 8 squared. So this is going to be square root of 65. We're going to go for jm now. jm, we're going to go 2, 4, 6. So we're going to go down 6 and over 1. And that will be square root of 37. LM, we're going to go 2, 4, 6, 8, and up 1. So this is square root of 65. And KL, we're going to go 2, 4, 6, and over 1. So the square root of 37. So this shows that opposite sides are congruent, which is not enough yet because we need to also show that the diagonals are congruent. So uh, Km. So Km, we're going to go 2, 4, 5. 5 down, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. 5 down and 9 over. So this will be 49 plus 25. 49 plus 25 is 74. And we're going to do the same thing for JL. So JL, we're going to go 2, 4, 6, 7. 2, 4, 6, 7. Uh, wait, let me count again. Two, four, six, seven. And then two, four, six, seven. This is square root of seven squared plus seven squared. So we end up with this is square root of 98. So here we can say that this is not a this is not a rectangle. Km and JL are not equal. Diagonals are not equal. And actually, I should have, I should have uh, just started the problem by finding the diagonals first rather than going through and finding out the, all the opposite side lengths. That I, because if the diagonals are not congruent to begin with, then, you know, everything else is, is moot. Okay. Next, uh, 
negative 2 to 2, negative 2, 2 is right here. That's Q. R is 0, negative 2. Whoops. 0, negative 2. That's R. It's right there. 6, 1 is S. 6, 1 is S. And T is 4, 5. 4, 5 is right here. Okay, and it says here we need to use the distance formula again. So I will um, practice what I preach. I'm going to find out what the diagonals are first. So RT, we're going to go 2, 4, over, and then 2, 4, 6, 7. So it's 4 squared plus 7 squared. So 16 plus 49 that is 16 plus 49 is 65. And we're going to do the same thing with QS. So we're going to do, we're going to go down one, two, four, six, eight. Ah, one squared plus eight squared is indeed 65. So the diagonals are congruent, but that's not enough to justify that this is a rectangle. We got to find all opposite sides, right? So QT, we're going to go up 3 and over 2, 4, 6. So 3 squared plus 6 squared. So that would be 9 plus 36 is square root of 45. Uh, and then TS is we're going to go 2 over And two, four, four down, two over and four down. So four squared. So 16 plus four squared is 20. And then we're going to find RS. We're going to go two, four, six over. And three up. This is square root of 45. And finally, QR. We're going to go 2, 4, and 4 down and 2 over, which is square root of 20. So yes, QRST is a rectangle. Opposite sides are congruent. And diagonals are congruent. Okay, one comma eight is G. One comma eight is G. And negative seven seven is H. Negative seven, seven is H, and negative six one is J, negative six one, negative six one is J. And 2, 2 is K. 2, 2 is K. And how are we going to justify whether or not this is a rectangle? We're going to need to use the slope formula. Okay. So the slope formula. So to find a slope, we need to find a slope of all four sides, in other words. So slope of HG. And again, we can just count. We're going to go up 1. So positive 1. And then 2, 4, 6, 8. Let me count again. 2, 4, 6, 8. It is. So it's 1 eighth. Uh, the slope of GK is we're going to go 2, 4, 6. 2, 4, 6. Uh, we're going to go down 6 and over, over 1. So it's negative 6. So actually, we can just stop here. This is so 
uh, HG, uh, HG, KJ is not a rectangle because adjacent sides are not perpendicular slopes of adjacent sides are not negative reciprocals. So there you go.